Greetings, Matt Field, your favorite writing candidate for governor of the state of Utah. I have enjoyed a nice fourth. I hope everyone else has too. That's why I did not post last week. Please forgive me of my sins. However, I am posting now, so I will give you kind of the download from the last couple of weeks, some relatively exciting uh, updates, and hopefully we can continue to move forward to November unscathed and prepped and ready for a, a good election. So <clears throat> probably one of the biggest things that have happened somewhat recently, and oh, th by the way, I, did, I should mention real quick, if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you like what you're hearing here, then please subscribe, comment, like, uh, notification button, the whole deal, because that will help in the process of us getting where we need to go, and it'll help get more exposure in the full nine. So, uh, in addition, if you want to learn more about my proposal for the state of Utah, you can go to govmat.org. There is a book. It's kind of it's basically a book slash proposal. It's on audio. It's also written, so you can print it out and read it. You can read it on your phone. You can uh, listen to it while you're working in the yard, doing the dishes, whatever. And um, <clears throat> it's a good way to learn about what I what I plan to do as governor of the state. Additionally, uh, I do have another book on there, and I'm actually going to be touching on that a little bit today. Uh, it's called Living the Fable Tale of the Emperor's New Clothes, and it has a lot of information on there that should help kind of solidify some of these various ideas. Um, in both of the books, I use a great deal of research and references to indicate why I believe this or why I believe that one. In, in all reality, it's not really what I believe. It's what the facts render. So it's not really a matter of opinion, although in this world today, everything's about your truth, and that's it's a paradoxical way of thinking. It doesn't actually work. In reality, we have gravity, and gravity is going to react the same way every single time. It's the same thing with many of the things that we deal with in our lives today. Now, there might be a little bit of wiggle room in some of those issues that I talk about, but I do provide the receipts. I do have ample amount of research that back up my claims and what I plan to do. And I hope that you'll take the time to take a look and listen, because I don't think there's any other candidate, probably even in the entire United States, that's had a proposal as extensive and detailed as what I have done. So please take the time. Uh, this past couple of weeks, we've obviously seen the election that took place. Uh, I did mention a little bit about that recently. I did want to touch on that today. Uh, Phil Lyman, uh, a couple of days ago, he decided that he was going to push for those signatures that were, that were used for Cox to get on the ballot. Now, <clears throat> is this a valid request? Sure it is. Should it be stonewalled? It certainly shouldn't. And the reality is, is that if Cox wanted something like that, then he'd be able to get it, right? So, for example, earlier on in the campaign when uh, Lyman was looking for a new, well, for his lieutenant governor, he had someone else in mind. I can't remember the gentleman's name, but I guess apparently for a brief period of time he had lived in Idaho, uh, even though he's a lifelong resident of Utah. And because of that small indiscretion, not an indiscretion, <laughs> just that that small detail uh, it prohibited him from being the lieutenant governor and so the Lyman campaign had to abide right they had to do as they were told if they were going to make something happen there and so he eventually chose Clausen um, I don't really know much about her I'm and I'm not really here to comment on that at all but the fact of the matter is is he had a request he had something that he wanted to do but the state shut him down because of that even though he filed a, a lawsuit now, he's going to do the same thing. He's basically going to try and do the same thing that the state did to him and um, challenge Cox's ability to get on the ballot. Now, it would have been a lot better had he done this before, and maybe he did try to do it before, but I don't think he followed, filed a lawsuit. I think he just called it into question, and that is a problem. These sorts of things need to be dealt with beforehand before something happens because I do not believe, even though... He has the right to review that information, and even though there are some laws in the books that protect some level of privacy with the individuals, which should be respected, sure, but there's no reason why that can't be reviewed in a statistical manner, that that can't be reviewed by a third party 
to ensure the accuracy. And why not the uh, the Cox the Cox campaign do the same thing with the Lyman? I don't think there's any problem with that at all. I don't understand why people get all up in arms when people decide to call foul and question an election and question a uh, a certain process of the government. Because, of course, the government has never made a mistake in their entire lives. That, of course, is completely sardonic and not great satire, but it's that's completely false. When was the last time that you've seen, <coughs> excuse me, when was the last time that you were convinced the government did exactly what they were supposed to do in the moment they were supposed to do it? I honestly can't even think of an instant instance. Not really in my lifetime, honestly. The government is really bad at their job. They're really bad at their job. And it's largely because they have too many employees, for one. They're trying to solve every single world problem for another. And they are constantly being controlled by politics and the powers that be. And so whether or not you have a judge that is, you know, white as a pure snow, it doesn't really matter as much when the event has already taken place, right? And it makes it much more difficult for him to, him or her to act, and there are only two genders, by the way, uh, <clears throat> him or her to make that distinction when the suit is brought after the fact, okay? And it frankly isn't the best look for Lyman, but I understand his position, I understand what he's trying to do, and I, and I, and I hope he succeeds, honestly. I do hope he succeeds. I hope he is able to review that information, but I, I don't think he's got a snowball, snowball's chance. Uh, because it's just not going to happen. And this is one of the problems that we run into, and this is why I have kind of an exciting an exciting idea, exciting proposal that I'm going to be moving forward with, and I'm hopeful that I'll be able to get more traction with more media outlets, is that I am going to be working on a, a program with that is going to verify the vote. Okay. Now, again, you shouldn't have any problem with this. You People love to take offense. They love to believe that uh, this or that is bad. But um, when people are quiet and silent, particularly the government, about certain elements of an election, those of you that aren't familiar, there's a, there's a group. They're called Two Red Pills, I believe, and they have tra tried and fought for the information needed to conduct a full third-party audit of the 2020 election. And they have been stonewalled the entire time. Obviously, it's 2024, and they haven't been able to obtain all the information that's needed. And they've had to pay for a bunch of this this information out of their own pocket in order to make this happen. The problem is, is that the government hasn't been willing to turn it over. Not to mention, the government has been willing to go to court to prevent them from obtaining the information. And so I believe at this time, they're in, a, in the middle of an appeal to try and get the information. Why is this a problem? Why is this a problem? Explain this to me, Right. It's like a team that goes and plays, uh, you know, any any sport, soccer, football, basketball, whatever it is. And at the end of the game, <clears throat> you have you request that everyone takes a drug test because maybe there's maybe they're worried that you had done X, Y, and Z. Maybe you had you had some sort of drug, in, you know, uh, performance enhancing drug or whatever the case or something like that. And I mean. Why, if, if you are honest, right, and you've done what you were supposed to do, and by the way, there's, there's elements where, you know, in, in the election system where you're supposed to have these checks and you're supposed to have these audits. The problem is the state decides to conduct the audit themselves, right? It's as though you have the athlete go in and conduct the drug test themselves. Now, how do we know that that drug test is being conducted honestly? Well, we don't, right? It's not possible to know. And that's why you have a third party conduct the drug test. Hey, it looks like these guys are really, they're serious champions. None of them are on any uh, performance enhancing drugs. None of this, you know, all that sort of thing. And I don't understand why this is a problem. <clears throat> they do the same thing in the Olympics prior to. In fact, the Olympics is so stringent, they prevent you from using certain types of, uh, I think they're, they're stringent in some areas and not so, not so much in others. Politics really govern the day in many silly, silly ways uh, because countries have some pride issues. But the fact of the matter is, is that with in the Olympics, you cannot have too much caffeine before your event. Otherwise, you can be disqualified. And so all these, these things exist beforehand and they exist afterwards to ensure that everything happened fairly. 
And there's nothing wrong with that. People should feel empowered by that. They should say, wow, this guy has gone through the ringer and he still came out on top. He had no performance enhancing drugs, et cetera, et cetera, right? <clears throat> and so by launching a third party voter verification process, this enables us to have information at the same time the state is having the information. Now, will we get all the information the state has? No. But much like a accountant or a business owner will reconcile their books at the end of every month, you have to have a record to compare that against. So, <clears throat> for example, using this bank statement concept, most of the time when I am reconciling my books at the end of each month for my company, I review through the information and there's usually nothing wrong right there's nothing wrong on my books there's nothing wrong with the state with the uh with the bank statement however on occasion there's an issue with my books and i have missed something or i forgot something or i misplaced a receipt or you know whatever the case may be and it shows up on the bank statement and i'm like oh yeah and so i plug that in and also on occasion i will see and and well l let me finish this first <clears throat> sometimes i interrupt myself i'm sorry but then sometimes I have a, a charge on my bank statement that I have no idea where it came from. Okay, so to give you an example of this, but the, the seriousness varies. And so to give you an example of this is, you know, when I have missed something on my own books that shows up on, on my bank statement, maybe it's like 100 bucks, right? Like $100 or something like that. And so I just go through, I locate, I verify that that is the case, and then I just input that into my into my books. And so now I've got a fully balanced uh, set of books there. Now, the problem is, is that when I have had bank problems, they are much more serious. Okay. Uh, a few years ago, actually more than a few years ago <clears throat> for this one, then I got an even bigger one that was just a couple years ago. A few years ago, I had given my my uh, card information over the phone for vacation and that information must have been taken down because a few not a few months later probably like six seven months later someone had charged a delta vacation worth thousands of dollars against on my bank you know on my bank account as soon as i saw that obviously i contacted the bank and they went into an investigation and they realized it wasn't me at all and and the whole thing was the whole thing was nullified and i got my money back and then a few years ago, I had such a huge fraud act on one of my companies that they had charged my card so many times that it tripped the wire on my daily limit and prevented any more charges. Some, some jerk, who knows where, was charging my card. They charged my card like 10 times or something like that at the highest amount that they could through AWS, by the way, and they just like pounded it and then eventually it stopped around Christmas time too, by the way. And so I obviously contacted the bank and they resolved that. So my point is, is like for this example and for this purpose, most of the time I don't have an issue with my bank statement, you know, 95% of the time. But that 5% of the time that I have a problem with my bank statement, usually it's a huge problem with my bank statement. It isn't like a teeny tiny one. Because when I have a problem with my books, it's like 50 bucks here, 100 bucks there, you know, something small. It's nothing of any serious nature when I have something wrong with my books. But when I have a problem with my bank statement, we got, it's, it's a serious problem. And <clears throat> now I don't know if that's necessarily the case with the voting system. I don't know. I can't make any claims about the Utah voting system, whether or not it is, um, whether or not it has performed poorly in this most recent primary or if it's going to perform poorly in the uh, the general election. I can't speak to that. However, I can speak to their own audit. And this is something that I discuss in my in my book. And they talk about the issues that they have with updating voter rolls, the issues that they have with um, the chain of custody. And there's a myriad of other ones, and I, I include that in my book, and you can go through that, and you can look at all the references, and I actually provide the entire document, and you can look through the entire audit that the state conducted, and this is for the 2022 election. I couldn't locate one for the 2020 election. Anyway, so 
this is something, there are problems, and they admittedly say there are problems. So we already know there are problems. That's undisputed. And if you hear somebody talk that there aren't any problems, then they just haven't done the research. They're using talking points. They're a political hack, honestly, because there are always problems. There are always problems. And so what I'm proposing to do is I'm going to create a system with, uh, and I discuss it lightly in my book, right? But I didn't realize I was going to, I was going to move this direction. So I'm expounding upon it a little bit. bit. So when you receive your ballot, I'm going to start promoting this, but when you receive your ballot, you're going to take a picture of the choices that you've entered in, right? Whether you fill in the bubble or you write in something, you write in Matt Field, right, for governor. <laughs> you are going to take a picture of that ballot, <clears throat> okay? And then from that ballot, you're going to, um, you're going to submit that to, uh, to the state, you know, just as you normally would. Now, when you take that picture via that website, it's going to collect some data. It's going to collect your metadata. It's going to collect your location. It's going to collect your timestamp as to when it happened. And hopefully, hopefully, if we're able to get the programming sorted out, it'll actually review your entire ballot and enter the information into a form that you can verify. If we can't do that, then we won't do that, but we're going to try and do that. But at very least, we can definitely get the picture taken, that inf and the metadata, location data, and the uh, and the uh, timestamp on there, so that we can put that in a secure database. So that will then be sent to a, a secure bit database, and it will stay there untouched. And when the results come out, and that's why I'd love to have the form working properly. But when the results come out, we will at least have a strong sample size that will say, "Hey." This is what we're getting for Washington County. This is what we're getting for uh, Salt Lake County. This is what we're getting for Utah County. And if it's not matching up with what the state's doing, then it's time to file a lawsuit. Because then we literally have actionable data that'll say, look, X, Y, and Z says this. I need to see what yours says. And so for the first time, we'll have a case that we can bring that provides data that's contrary to what the state might have. Now, in the event that they have done a superb job and we find no issues in our third party verification process, then hey, great job, Utah. Great job, Utah election officials. Everything's good to go and we'll see you next time, right? But this has to be completed, this has to be built and in order for us to ensure that this election is carried out as it should. And the reason I say that a little bit more is in 2020, if you haven't read my book or listened to my book, Living the Fable Tale, Tale the Emperor's New Clothes, when you review over the 2020 election, there are so many anomalies that it is mind-blowing that there hasn't been any serious investigation that's taken place. Now, maybe there have been some that have worked to accomplish that, but they haven't been successful at all because there are massive issues with that election. And the only way we'd be, ever be able to determine what is going on is if we're able to access the data, but we can't because we don't have a third-party verification process. Now, to do something nationally, that would be tough. But to do something in the state of Utah, where we'll have around a million voters, it's possible. It's possible. It's not going to be easy, but it'll be possible. And we can actually get some information that's going to ensure that we actually have a fully and completely transparent, because they'll be forced to. They'll be forced to show that bank statement against our ledger. So... If you want to support this, and I'm going to try and get on some programs to promote this. I've got hopefully some, I do have some things in the works and hopefully they go through. If you want to support this, go to govmat.org, donate, and I'm going to use that money to create this system and also to advertise my candidacy and the system itself. Okay. So you don't have to vote for me, right? If you, if you, you know, you review my proposal, and you're like, ah, he's Bush League. I don't like him at all, you know, and I want to vote for this guy. Then fine. That, that's your call. I'm not going to, I'm not, I've said this before. I'm, I'm going to say it again. I'm not going to convince anyone to vote for me. Okay. I really am here to promote morality, to promote integrity. And if the populace chooses that they don't want that, that's on you guys. And you'll have to live with that decision. I'm not to say, not to say that there's nobody else that possesses those qualities either, though. So I shouldn't be so presumptuous, but. Um, the point is, is that you can write in anybody, you can fill out anybody, whatever you want, 
and submit that and that will be just used as a verification process to ensure that what happened is true and the great thing is too, keep that on your phone right keep that on your phone and if anything's called into question and you need to be sending that information to the court you can send that into so it's a great opportunity for us for those of you that believe in the system to prove that system and it's a great opportunity for those that do not believe the system is functioning property properly to verify what is actually happening with that system it is literally a win 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 all the way across the board everybody wins the only one that might be nervous is the state if they're doing anything nefarious if they're not win for them too right so I'm going to be working toward this and I hope that you will support me in that process because we need the help as much help as we can get to make that happen and we do have a relatively we don't have a relatively short programming window we have a short programming window and we have to move aggressively to get it done so please take the time to make a donation because this is one of the ways that we ensure everything is functioning properly in our state now I'm gonna hit a couple extra things here real quick and then we'll uh, and then I'll let you go. <laughs> there are a couple of interesting things that have happened around the state that I wanted to make a quick comment on. First of all, there was an, there was an encircle facility for the LGBTQ youth uh, that they were just talking about how it was delayed. And there ha there are a couple of encircle facilities. Now, I just want to make clear, I'm not opposed to facilities like this. What I'm opposed to is what is being preached within those facilities, right? The issue isn't that LGBTQ people have more problems than others. It's that people are promoting them to remain as they are. Now, if you review my book, I go through a bunch of things, a bunch of st statistics associated with the LGBTQ youth, and people have have tried to basic, basically trope this, this false narrative that as soon as they have gender, quote-unquote, gender-affirming care, or as known in the real world, gender mutilation, a genital mutilation, they no longer have this issue with suicidality. That is false. In fact, the suicidality on average remains the same. The average is they remain the same. Some people go up, their suicidality goes up, some of it goes down. But on average, there is no difference from the amount of uh, attempt to suicide before they have the operation versus after it is the same and so this idea that we are helping our children that have these identity uh, these identity issues are that we're doing them a service by promoting this type of thing is false and it's wrong and I go into great detail about that and so if there are facilities like this that are going to help LGBT Q plus youth help sort out their issues and help them understand their true nature then I'm all for it but if it's something else where they are essentially reaffirming them over and over and over again that's just gonna cause more problems now there are good ways to go about helping people understand their true nature and helping them understand that they are the right the who they are and what they are supposed to do there are great ways to do that that are positive and reinforcing and and help build someone but we can't continue to promote the idea that there are more than two genders uh, in this planet because it's just not true as I mentioned earlier your truth doesn't mean a thing your truth is an opinion I like pizza you like hot dogs right that's an opinion that has nothing to do with truth whatsoever because as soon as you decide that gravity is fungible you are going to have a pretty tough time jumping off the top of that building if you believe you fly you can fly it is going to respond the same way to you as it responds to me and we cannot pretend otherwise and i could go on with this but i'm i'm kind of running a little bit low on time but i encourage you go to govmat.org you can listen to that full section my third priority where i talk about protecting our children and youth uh, that's my longest section um, and it goes through a bunch of things and if you're like well what's before protecting our children and youth well go see go see there's some very very important things that have to take place before then in order to make that a possibility on to this next story that I saw Salt Lake City approved Smith plan for Delta Center and Entertainment District okay so they're working on this revitalization process 
Revitalization for what, I'd like to ask, first of all. There isn't any particular reason why there's any level of revitalization that needs to take place. The issue is, right now, is that, in my opinion, not in my opinion, but in all reality, I own a small business and I've never had the government make a vote on my company to do X, Y, and Z. This is another example of the government choosing, picking and choose, uh, choosing winners and winners and losers and this is an op this is a spot where they're picking a huge winner because even though the companies that will be functioning outside the delta center and other places like that are private companies and they will maintain their private income to themselves they are going to have a huge hurdle removed for them by the citizens of the state of utah and particularly those that live well it's going to definitely be the citizens of the state of utah because the city of Salt Lake City is not actually, you know, receiving that money from their citizens. They're receiving it from the state. Okay. This is the problem with this. It says two sides have negotiated since April, leading to a final agreement document, a document that emerged on Friday. Under the deal, Smith Entertainment Group can seek up to $900 million in bonds toward the Delta Center remodeling and other projects within the district. Now... <clears throat> this has been a uh, this is a big this is a big process and there's probably going to be some payback that's that's involved there and all that sort of thing but it is a very favorable deal for a very very large company okay and this is something that shouldn't be happening the government should not be participating in this sort of thing at all what this Smith Entertainment Group should be doing is they should be seeking a loan from a company from a uh, from a bank in order to make this happen. Now, some might say, well, this is, we need to revitalize downtown. We need to help with this. We need to help with that. We need to, if you want to help with those things, remove taxes. Okay. The one thing that drives me crazy is that, drives me crazy every year, is that the government comes to me and says, hey, pay me money because you own a house and you live there and you keep it up and you maintain it and you pay all the bills and everything else. Now pay us money <clears throat> for services that you don't use. This is now a good point that was made. I should have pulled up this clip. I haven't done clips recently. Sorry about that. But there was a clip that I saw recently where this guy said, you know, if you don't like Bud Light, then don't drink it. He said, if you don't like Target, don't shop there. If you don't like paying your taxes to the government, stop paying them. He says, wait, but that doesn't work. Because if you don't pay your taxes, then guys and guns are going to show up. And they're going to make you pay your taxes. Or at very least, they're going to file a lawsuit against you. And they're going to auction your house off, your property, to recoup their taxes. And most of the time, these are taxes that aren't all that serious. You know, it's not like a huge amount of money comparative to the value of your home. This is a massive overreach by the government that just drives me nuts. This whole process of taxing and it has no benefit for really anybody except for the government themselves. And it's conditioned our society and our generations, probably all the way to the boomers, our oldest generation right now. There are some that are older, but <clears throat> our oldest generation essentially have been conditioned to believe that the government is in charge of various other things. They're in charge of your school. They're in charge of your of uh, your parks. They're in charge of your other events that take place in, in the city. They're in charge of uh, what businesses do. They're in charge. I mean, they li the government literally has their hand in everything. And the reality is, is if you want liberty, you have to be willing to step up and take on more responsibility. And this is going to be a massive paradigm shift that has to take place in the state and in communities that if you want your state back, and if you want to actually have full control, then you have to do what's needed. It's like the kid leaving his house after graduating from high school, going to college, being intoxicated with all this freedom and liberty, and he's going about doing his thing, no mom and dad to, to bark at him when the, he gets home late and all this sort of thing. But then along comes the rent bill, and then along comes the car bill, the gas bill, the uh, the food bill, the tuition, 
the million other things that you have to pay for as you grow up. And life seems a little bit more bogged down and you don't think you really like that. And that's, I massively oppose to parents that pay for all those things. This is something that kids have to actually take on. They have to actually do. If they want to pursue it, then it's on them to do it. And this is one of the massive issues that we have is we are basically pretending to be free people. But we're unwilling to take on the responsibility required to be those free people. And I think you should think on that. And again, I encourage you to review my proposal. Matt Gov, or sorry, govmat.org. Go there, check, download it, listen to it. There's even a, there's a link to the Rumble. If you want to listen to the other book, Living the Fable Tale, The Emperor's New Clothes, you can do that too. All free. I'm not trying to make any money on this. I'm literally just trying to do the right thing. You can believe me if you want. You don't have to believe me. I, I really don't care. I'm just trying to do my very best, and I hope that you will too. I want to leave with a uh, <clears throat> a quick quote or a, a scripture that I that I really like. And if you're not religious, you should check it out. You know, it's pretty cool. <laughs> but um, this is a this is a one that comes from Alma, uh, the chapter 41, 10. Verse 10, it says, Do not suppose because I have, it has been spoken concerning restoration that ye shall be restored from sin to happiness. Behold, I say unto you, wickedness never was happiness. And I would add to that that laziness never was happiness and that inaction never was happiness. You know, I, I'll i never retire my entire life because all of a sudden you go from being a productive individual in society to someone who plays golf. And Now, there are definitely, <clears throat> there are definitely ways in which you can enjoy your retirement. I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing on that or anything like that. But we have to be productive. We have to make sure that we are putting forth a strong effort to, to ensure the future of our family, of our children, of our, of our society, of our God. And that takes and requires a lot of work. And if we're unwilling to do that work, then you, I guarantee you, you're going to feel unhappy. You're going to feel sad. And that's what the government has created. The government has created a situation where there are many individuals who would rather live on the government, would benefit from the government, rather than actually taking action and doing what's right. Now, there are instances where people need help, but I don't necessarily think that needs to come from the government either. There are a million different ways in which that can happen, and it shouldn't be coming from the government. There are a lot of things that should be that should be removed from the government. The government shouldn't have this kind of power, and it does very poorly with this kind of power. And we need to make sure we put it in check. And I hope, again, that you'll take the time to go govmat.org and make a donation so that we can get started on this voter verification process so we can ensure that this is as fair as we possibly can make it and we'll have the receipts to show in the event we need to bring a lawsuit if our numbers aren't matching up with the states and they'll have to show that bank statement they'll have to show what they did was fully and completely ethical and if not we'll hold them accountable i appreciate your time please take the time to be involved and do what you must do to make a difference